Perfect. All right, good day everyone. My name is Massimiliano. I represent here the company Plan V. And today I'm going to talk to you about our project regarding the development of a snooping system for a multi-core processor based on CVA6. So first, let's start with the motivation behind uh, uh, this beginning of this project. Motiva the short, uh, shortly said, it's that there is a no one fits all solution because well, we're talking about uh, processor design. There are different applications which require uh, different architectures. So there are we, that's the reason why we have microcontrollers, why we have real-time processors, and why we have more uh, powerful uh, application-level processors. Also, the reason why we have single-core, uh, multi-core system, or many-core systems. And um, the, um, uh, the reason which we write the solution, uh, the, um, the um, Picking one uh, of these solution is always um, trade-off between scalability, speed, and um, uh, and costs. So um, in the um, in the open source uh, world, what we've seen recently is there is uh, there has been a lot of interest, uh, especially of from now from the academic research. Um, to develop uh, systems which are targeting many cores. So we have, for example, Open Python work for, uh, work framework. We have Emmerblade, which are targeting uh, especially uh, systems which are uh, clusters of um, uh, with high numbers of CPUs. And um, um, we think that uh, there is room for new implementation and there is the interest also, for example, from the industry, also for systems which are smaller and um, uh, but still not as simple as a simple core, but uh, a small cluster of, uh, of CPUs. So what we want to do here is trade scalability with speed. Uh, we are not interested in... Um, supporting a big number of, uh, of CPUs, but we want the communication between the caches of the CPU to be as fast as possible. Uh, we know that there are already solutions which support snooping uh, algorithms like uh, rocket chip, uh, but, this is uh, but this is based on tiling. We are targeting uh, CVA6, which has an, a native AXI interface, so this was not suitable for um, uh, for the project we had in mind. So what we decided to build, um, first we selected CVA6 as a CPU. The reason for this is that it is a very popular uh, CPU, especially here in Europe. There are industry leaders which are uh, working on the development and on the improvement of this, um, uh, of this architecture. Um, and the academia is also providing constantly new features uh, for, this, uh, for this project. So now it started as a student project at ETH Zurich, uh, then the number of uh, possible configuration options increased, uh, there is now a um, ver verification environment which aims to be a um, commercial level um, verification environment called Core 5 Verif, which is under development at the moment, and recently have been the, the hypervisor extensions have been contributed to the project, vector extensions. Uh, there is a plan for a um, dual issue version of the CPU, so it is a, a project which is very much alive. How we want to use it is to build a system which looks more or less like the ARM MP core solution, it is uh, said nothing new, nothing flashy. The architecture is also pretty old. Uh, it started in 2007. But uh, again, we believe that there is uh, also some interest in projects which are um, in small clusters, of course. So the plan is not to support eight or more CPUs uh, in a system. But we want um, the... Um, uh, coherence architecture to be as fast as possible. This is, uh, this is the um, high-level uh, diagram which shows what we have been working on. So we have the CVA6 CPUs. 
the CVA6 comes with uh, two, uh, with the possibility to choose between two uh, cache implementation, a write-through cache or the write-back cache. We decided to uh, use the write-back cache. The reason for this is to try to limit the traffic on the, uh, on the interconnector and so to m try to make uh, to just uh, transfer the, um, uh, the bare minimum, uh, the generate the bare minimum of the transactions which are required. Uh, we decided for a bus snooping system, uh, we implemented the Moesi uh, protocol, so each cache line can be in one of these uh, five states, so it can be modified, uh, it can be in uh, ownership, exclusive, um, shared, or invalid state. And since uh, CVA6 uses, has already an AXI interface, the natural choice was to extend it to an ACE interface. Uh, so this is what we did. And um, uh, the, um, the, four, the two or four CPUs are connected with each other with uh, the CCU uh, interconnector, so it's uh, like um, uh, coherence control unit, which uh, takes the um, ACE transactions from the CPUs and either transfers them to the uh, to the lower um, part of the system in case no uh, coherence mechanism needs to be triggered, or the snooping messages are forwarded to the other caches and then the response is sent back to the initiator. And the goal of the project was to try to outperform Open Python with this uh, two or four core configuration. Here there are um, some more details about the implementation. So this is the um, block diagram which uh, roughly explains what are the components of the write-back cache. So in the original project we had uh, uh, three cache controllers which handle the requests coming from the page table worker or the load or the store unit. Um, then there is the mishandler, which is the component which uh, basically sends, uh, generates the request to the outside world via the AXI interface. There is the tag compare module, which um, uh, forwards the request to the SRAM, which actually uh, which formed the, the cache of the system and uh, compares the results with the, um, the tag uh, to determine whether a cache line is in the, in the cache or not. And um, so we had to make uh, relatively few modifications to the original architecture. Uh, the first thing, obviously, is to introduce a new cache controller which takes care of the requests coming from the Snoop interface, so basically the requests which come from the um, interconnector. And um, we had to add a new flag to identify the status of, the, um, uh, of each cache line. So originally we only had uh, a flag indicating whether a cache line is valid or invalid, dirty or clean, so, and we had to add a flag indicating whether a cache line is in a shared or in a unique state. And we also extended the, um, the configuration uh, of CDA6, so we defined a new, uh, a new region uh, which uh, determines whether um, uh, an address is in a shareable region or in a non-shareable region. So in total we have four possible configurations here. And, um, of course, we had also to modify the missender and uh, the, the cache controllers because there was uh, the need to, uh, to refine and to add features to be able to support uh, requests coming from the outside. And also to generate the, pro the proper uh, transactions types over the ACE interface. The second component which, uh, which constitutes this project is the um, coherence control unit. So the design of this um, has been heavily inspired by the uh, AXI crossbar, which is part of the, of the pulp library. Uh, we took um, its main components, so the AXI multiplexer and demultiplexer, 
And uh, what we've been developing is the intelligent part of this, uh, of this system, so this CCU logic. Basically, what happens here is that each of the masters, so each of the uh, CPUs, sends an ACE request. The AXI demultiplexer determines, based on the type of the, of the transaction, whether the request has to be um, forwarded to the other, uh, uh, to the other, uh, to the other caches in the system, if, and so to generate a snoop transaction, or whether the request can directly be transferred uh, to the lower, uh, to the uh, to the AXI slave, and this happens in case uh, a transaction is targeting a non-shareable region, or in case the um, transaction is a write-back transaction, which doesn't need to generate uh, any more traffic on the on the Snoop interface. And um, the CCU logic basically is, uh, um, is serializing the requests which are coming from the CPUs via this uh, AXI multiplexer, and then base it analyzes the, the type of transaction and it generates the corresponding snoop transaction to the CPUs, gets the response, and forwards the response back to the, to the initiator. Um, it can also happen that the required data is not present in the cache line of the, of the other CPUs, so the CCU logic also has uh, the ability to generate the transactions to the shared memory. Uh, in terms of implementation, um, we have a, a running system. It is running on FPGA. We prototyped it uh, on a Genesis 2 board. And on this board, we've been able to uh, implement a dual core system because of the limited capacity of the FPGA. Um, apart from the two cores and the interconnector and the standard peripherals, which you expect to see in, uh, in such a system, we also integrated already uh, level two cache. The system is capable of running Linux, and we uh, built uh, the Linux, Linux image using the um, CVSX SDK, which is another repository uh, and which is um, under the open hardware umbrella. Uh, we generated the Linux image using OpenSBI and BuildRoot, and um, well, it is working as expected. Um, you can play Tetris, classic uh, uh, benchmark of a good working system. And um, we also have been running the Splash 3 tests as a benchmark to measure the performances of the system. In terms of uh, resource occupation, here you can see the comparison between OpenPeaton and the Carlson's. Carlson's is the name of the project, by the way, I think I forgot to mention before. And um, this is not the, um, the entire system. This is just, uh, these numbers are just uh, related to, to the CPU and the, um, uh, the um, uh, interconnector and LLC in case of Carlson's and the uh, PMesh architecture in, in case of uh, OpenPython. So here you can see that our system is, bill well, occupies less than 50% of the resources of the counterpart. In, ter in terms of um, performance, we have two types, uh, we've been running two types of tests. So we developed some bare metal tests to profile the duration of the, um, uh, of the reading or writing transactions. And uh, we compared the results in our system and on OpenPython. And here you can see that as expected, as, at least as we expected, um, we are much faster than uh, the, open, the execution on OpenPython. Uh, the problem comes when we run Splash 3 tests on the Linux FPGA, and in this case, OpenPython is faster than, uh, than our solution, and we still cannot, uh, uh, can, we didn't understand why. So there is still an investigation ongoing. We know that there are some, uh, some differences, quite obviously, for example, the, uh, the clocking frequency which is used by OpenPython is, I think, around 30% higher than the, um, uh, the clock we use in our system. But anyway, even if we 
take this, um, this into account, uh, the, the numbers don't match. So we are actively working to understand and to solve this problem. So some extra information about how, what we've been doing, uh, apart from RTL designing. So a lot of uh, time has been spent in the development of tests. We have unit tests, which are uh, verifying the functionality of the uh, data cache uh, in isolation. Uh, we have other tests which are verifying the functionality of the um, interactions between caches. So we, uh, we have a, a test bench where we have two or four or six data caches connected uh, together through the querence control unit. We're randomizing event. Uh, we have a scoreboard which, uh, which checks that the transactions are and the results are the expected one. Uh, we also have integration tests where uh, we, we test, um, we have software running on, uh, on two or four CPUs. We have the level two cache integrated. Uh, also in this case, we monitor the messages which are generated at each level. And uh, we control that the generated messages are the one which we are expecting. We have performance tests, as already mentioned, and we also have litmus tests, which are running on, on RTL. They're to verify the memory consistency, um, that the memory consistency is compatible with the, with the standard. And, uh, well, they take a lot of time to finish. I think the last time I ran this test, I had to wait five days before I got the, all, the, all the log files. In terms of next steps, as already mentioned, we want to solve the problems which we currently had, the performance problem which we currently have. It will be very interesting to get some results in terms of uh, power and performance uh, on, uh, on some relevant uh, technology node. Uh, we, are, uh, we will be glad to be able to contribute this project to the, um, open, hardware, uh, to the open hardware group. Uh, we started discussing with, um, uh, with the BAO team. Uh, they would like to test and run their hypervisor on, uh, on this platform. And of course, we are uh, willing to support everyone which is interested uh, in integrating this solution uh, in, uh, in their projects. Some extra, uh, extra information. So where is everything? Uh, you can find it on, on our uh, GitHub page. We have two main branches. Uh, we have a master branch, uh, which is aligned, or more or less aligned. It's not really... Um, uh, the, the, the last rebase is a couple of months old, probably, uh, but it tries to be aligned with the uh, open hardware master branch. And the second branch uh, tries to be aligned with the... Um, uh, the PALP version of CVA6. So, uh, short uh, what the hell Colson's is, uh, it is an Etruscan god. Uh, it is the, um, like the Etruscan equivalent of Janus, which is the, um, the god looking at gates and order, so it looked like an appropriate name for a project like this. And um, these are the contact information in case you want to know more. And in case you want to play Tetris, I have a board. We can set it up outside and have fun. And that's it. Cool. Thank you, Max. Um, We'll take one or two questions while we swap Rocco over for the next talk. We're running a bit late. We'll get through Rocco's talk and then we'll go have lunch. How's that sound? Alexi. Where's, where's Rocco? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so in the beginning, you mentioned tiling. And uh, yep. then you c kind of slowly switched to Axi, Ace, and so on. Uh, you were the. Tiling has coherent pro profile, so you can actually connect 
uh, you know, mo a cluster with tiling, right? Any plans on tiling or? Uh, not today. We didn't think about it, honestly. Cool, probably one more while Rocco, wait, sorry, Max, we just swap Rocco's laptop. Hello? Okay. Oh, sure. Um, Hello? Ah, cool. Great, well, thank, thanks for the talk. I was, I was just wondering um, if you could tell me what you've done in terms of verification for, for this design. So we have a unit test, as I mentioned before, we have taken, for example, the write back cache. Uh, there are already, there were already tests existing for it, so we, extending the, uh, we extended this test, uh, trying to stress, I would try to verify that depending on the request which the data cache uh, gets as an input, we get the correct uh, um, transactions generated as, as an output, and also we get the correct uh, update of the cache status. Uh, we did uh, some more integration tests, so we have multiple uh, data caches connected with the, uh, with the CCU, the interconnector, and we randomly generate transactions, and we monitor whether the, the end result is what we, what we expected. Uh, we also had tests at a higher level, so in instantiating in a test bench the whole CPU, not just the, uh, the cache. Um, then, well, litmus test, and um, and this is basically it. Uh, I have to say that probably the unit tests have been the most useful to detect bugs. Uh, the others, well, not so much, but <laughs> cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks Max. Cheers. Welcome. Thank you.